Twitter. We had a tweet from uh, at Leon the Fixer. And uh, at Leon the Fixer asks, were there any book recommendations that podcast guests gave in their 2018 raps? I seem to remember them in past years, but didn't seem to be any this year. Uh, but he is wondering, uh, you know, do we have any any book recommendations that we read through the year um, or or even earlier? Something that we can throw out there for listeners and Folks, you're in luck because Matt and I both read a lot, and we've got some pretty good recommendations we think coming at you. So, Matt, I'm going to let you kick it off. What 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 kind of recommendations do you have for our readers out there? Um, one personal finance book I actually just read. It was called Your Money or Your Life. I don't know if you're familiar with this one. Mm-mm. This is, in my opinion, my wife and I just both finished reading this. In my opinion, it's the best book on personal finance I've ever read. Oh, really? Wow. Um, in terms of just kind of putting it into perspective, like saving money and kind of how to get yourself in the mindset of kind of a saver as opposed to a spender. So anyone looking to, you know, if your New Year's resolution was to be smarter about how you're spending money and stuff like that, I definitely recommend giving that one a read. Uh, Beyond that, I love to recommend some of the classics. I know this was on my last book list I did on this podcast a few years ago, but um, I got to reiterate Peter Lynch's books, especially one up on Wall Street. Yeah, This is, uh, we were just talking about Square. This is the one that, you know, got me to invest in Square and to find opportunities like that. The whole book is about using your advantages as a small investor over the over, you know, the big players, hedge funds, institutional investors, etc., by just kind of using what you already know. And the whole reason I invested with Square is because I was, you know, walking through farmers markets in my area, just kind of a plumber came to my house with a square card reader out of his pocket. And it's kind of like observed how this was becoming more and more of a trend before I even knew what the company did or who, (laughs) who it was. And that's kind of how I got them on my radar as an investment and wound up. That's been my best performing stock I've ever invested in. I bought it a few years ago at $11 and still own it today. And even after the recent correction, it's been, you know, a big, big winner. Um, so that's called one up on wall street. I actually have a copy of it right here. Yep. Um, and another of Peter Lynch's books that I like that is kind of a lesser known one, it's called Learn to Earn. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Um, it's a really good overview of the basics of investing. Um, you know, if you've ever tried to read like a college finance textbook and find it's just kind of way over the head, <laughs> this is a way that kind of just breaks everything down into real simple English in a really easy to understand way. Um, beyond that, the two Benjamin Graham books are always great ones to read if you haven't read them already. Uh, The Intelligent Investor and Security Analysis is the, if um, the way I would kind of, kind of phrase it is the intelligent investor is like going to college for investing and securities analysis is grad school. Yeah. It's kind of the, the step beyond it kind of really teaches you how to dive into the numbers and things like that. But the intelligent investor, um, they actually, they updated it a few years ago and, Probably the best book on value investing ever written, and it's it's Warren Buffett's favorite book. So if that tells you anything, yeah, I enjoyed reading that one. I think it just a lot of the principles that um, that he wrote about back then, uh, Ben Graham, they they still hold today. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit of a different world today. The way technology has changed, uh, sort of the landscape out there. But but I and I never read Securities Analysis. Um, I that that was I don't know. I felt like it was a bit more. Into the weeds that I was looking for at the time, um, but I have heard from from a number of people that they benefit a lot from reading it. So maybe I should get in there and give it a read as well. So you know, I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction because I think you gave a lot of great investing sort of big picture investing books that I, I we've read most of them. I love Peter Lynch's take on things and can't recommend those enough. And I think if you read one up on Wall Street, I mean read Beating the Street as well. Um, and and you've got Learn to Earn. Those are three great Peter Lynch books and those those lessons really are timeless as well. I think you know the best book that I read in 2018 and I'm going to thank one of our members and listeners Greg Gages out there because he's the one who left me this book last time he was in town for a for one of our events. It's called The Heal 
Healing of America, A Global Quest for Better, Cheaper, and Fairer Healthcare, uh, written by T.R. Reed. And this is just a, a really, it's an easy read, but it is so informative and it gives you a look at the healthcare systems around the world. And, and, and he, he essentially goes in, into all of these different places to try to find out the, the strengths and the weaknesses of everybody's system. And, and it, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. There is no one answer for for you know particularly our problems here domestically. But I think it goes to show that it's not a simple solution. It's going to be difficult when you've got a lot of political uh, sway going one way versus the other. Um, but it really, for me, it all boils back down to what is the goal of your healthcare system. Are you trying to make sure everybody gets healthcare or are you trying to achieve some other goal? And with most countries the goal was very clearly let's make sure everybody has healthcare. After reading the book, I I don't feel as comfortable saying that our goal here is to give everybody healthcare. I think it's to give everybody healthcare with some conditions and in that that makes it a bit more difficult, but I think that's a great book to give you a better idea of how healthcare is viewed around the world and uh you recognize that it's not a one size fits all. It's certainly a tough problem to solve, but I found myself highlighting passage after passage in that book uh, because I just I, I keep on going back and looking at it again. Just a, a great read. Um, another one I read this a couple of years back, a few years back, I guess. A Citizen Coke by Bar- uh, Barto Elmore, and this is just a neat one because it talks about the the history of Coca Cola from the very beginning and how the business was built, how it changed. The parts of the value chain that made up the business. I mean, this really, this really goes into uh, into some some neat areas of the business that a lot of people wouldn't maybe think of. But essentially, every chapter is devoted to one facet of the business, whether it's the water or whether it's the bottling or whether it's the the actual soda mix. And in, in in talking about the the economies that benefit. Uh, from one versus the other. So that was a fun read. Um, and then uh, American icon Alan Mulally and the Fight to Save Ford Motor Company. This one was written by Bryce Hoffman. And it was this is this was published a number of years back, and it was it was as uh, you know the financial crisis hit. We saw all these automakers uh, really really uh, struggling hard, and Ford was the one that was able to uh, stand stand above the rest because uh, they they. One one of the reasons they brought in Alan Mulally, who who really he had a, he had a strategy in mind, he had a vision in place, and he and he he led that company uh, from from a very difficult position into a position of success. And Ford has done very well since then. Obviously, the auto industry is a difficult one to begin with, uh, but I think it is a really neat story about Alan Mulally, the guy, about what he did with Ford, about the other players in the space and the in the areas where they fell short. Um, and you know, I, I had the great fortune of actually interviewing Alan Mulally one year at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Nice as could be, it was a big thrill for me. One of the highlights of my life as an analyst. I mean, just getting to meet and talk with him was really cool. And reading this book, uh, it resonated even more. Uh, so those are three that I think, uh, if you're looking for some good investing stories, those are, those are great ones there. Uh, so hopefully. That will give Leon the Fixer and the rest of our listeners a fun list from which to choose here in 2019. 